Today is June 1st. I hopped in the whip. It's like, let's turn DoorDash on. Let's make some good money. Start off okay. I'm going to show you all everything. I'm like, let me record the ride along. Man, I couldn't have been more wrong about how today was going to go. But we're independent contractors, so we can turn the apps off if we choose and look at some clouds. Let's talk about why I stopped doing gig work today. Welcome back to Mr. Bet on You. We do gig work as a side hustle right now, making money when we want, trying to build something bigger and better for me. What about y'all? Listen, I had great intentions today. I was gonna go out, I wanna film a ride along. Been a couple weeks since I did like a ride along, showed y'all everything. I'll put some of the offers I got right here, right? And you guys could decide in the comments which ones I took. I saw some good stuff in the beginning and I started seeing some trash and then we got some good ones, some hidden tips, low mileage, a lot of miles, it is what it is. But one of the orders I took was a stack that I started to regret because there was a wait time and then I get to the Dollar General and they didn't have an item. So I, the guy wasn't responsive. So then I say they don't have it and I only got paid like $3 versus six or seven. And I'm kind of like, this is taking for, you know, I wasn't happy and I, I drop it off. The guy was a jerk and I was like, you know what? What am I doing out here? I had, I had a Pedro moment. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, at that point, I had only made like 45 bucks. It'd been a couple hours. Not the worst, but not great. And and I was telling myself, because I got to remind myself sometimes, and I got to remind y'all, I think some of you guys can relate. What? Why am I spending so much time on certain days of the week trying to make what I feel is a little bit of money, right? Like I'm over here shopping and it pays me $3. I'm picking up a pizza and it's $7. And I'm like, what am I doing? I just made $9 and some change on this particular run. And it was like for almost 40 minutes of my time. And I said, I don't want to have a bad day and have that energy go to my family or my friends and keep it inside. So I turned DoorDash off. And the reason I'm making this kind of video is because I couldn't do the ride along how I wanted to, right? And I decided to turn the app off and do other things because these gig economy apps are wonderful. I like them. I've been doing it for two and a half years, full-time slash part-time. I've been in the gig economy for three and a half years, and I mostly like it. But the thing I love the most is when you have a bad day, when you don't feel like doing it, you don't have to do it. And you don't have to ask a boss for a day off. Can I leave early? I, got, I need PTO. You just stop. And if you are smart enough to this point, if you've been watching this channel, you should be having other ways to make money to where when you decide to turn an app off, you're not hindering your bills and your money making ability because you have money coming from somewhere else to help compensate. So, you know, I just had a moment today and I said, you know what, like I reminded myself, you don't have to do certain things in the gig economy. You can make it work for you, work as little and as much as you want. And I felt good that I just decided to turn it off and not give it my energy. Now, I do have one other thing I want to talk about. The old debate of, should you get Top Dash or do you need it for Dash now? I made a video yesterday, asked you guys, put your AR in the comments. I uh, feel like the majority of the ones I saw, a lot of you guys have a higher AR because you feel like that's working for you for whatever reason. Maybe your market's oversaturated, you need the Dash now option. You're, you're working and you're adapting and you're making money, which is fantastic. But I find it funny I feel like still a lot of the people that aren't making good money with DoorDash, they haven't been able to still adapt. Their acceptance rate is low. Sometimes they see good orders, sometimes they don't. It is what it is. But overwhelmingly, most of the people that talk crap on DoorDash and think it's the worst or company and they can't make money, they're doing the same, they're working the app the same exact way they did last year or two years ago and they're expecting a different result. And they're sitting in the car, twiddling thumbs, waiting on, well, I'm, every order needs to be at least $8 or $10 or $9, or I'm just gonna sit here and I'm not moving my car unless it's this amount of money. And you know they'll sit and wait for a $9 order going, let's say three miles, right? But they won't take a $5 going one. Let, let me say that one more time for everybody in the back. They're waiting on a $9 going three or whatever, but they won't take a five going one. So that's $10 for two miles. Probably takes you about the same amount of time. So instead you want everything, all the stars and the moon and the sun to align perfectly for you. And that's not how the apps work. That's not the way the world works. 
Now, some of y'all might be asking, well, Pedro, why are you saying that? What's the relevance? You didn't work a lot today. You said you didn't like it. You got frustrated. You turned it off. True, true, true. All true. But the point here is what's great about the gig economy is you can work it however you want. And none of us should be telling somebody, oh, you took a 425 for a mile. You took five. I don't do that. I don't move my car unless it's this amount of money. But then you're not making any money. We should all be cool with people working the apps how they want, turning them on, turning them off. We are independent in that way. We have that freedom to, to do what we want and move how we want mostly in the gig economy. And I still believe, and I'm going to keep saying it, do this work part-time. Treat it like a true side hustle. Don't allow yourself to be so like giving your app so much of your time that where you're just basically capping yourself on how much money you can make. And even those, those of you that are out there making a thousand, fifteen hundred, two grand a week. Fantastic. I applaud you. But that, once again, is not sustainable. And you're actually costing yourself money in the long run. But continue to work the apps. Turn them on. Turn them off. It's all good. That's what's fantastic about the gig economy. But know that there is an end expiration date for most of us doing this type of work. And we're going to continue to see that trend. And a lot of people will go back to a W-2, they'll go this, they'll go that, because they allowed the app to frustrate them. I didn't do that today. I said, let me turn it off. Why am I going to sit here and try to make another 20, 25, 30 bucks an hour if it's not, if I'm not vibing with it, right? Do you know how easy it is to make 25, 30 bucks? It's not that hard, especially when you're working on yourself. So a question I want to ask you, do you have a minimum? You don't move your car unless it's $5, $6, $8. Some of y'all don't move it unless it's $10 and you feel like drivers that take anything less than that are silly and blah, blah, blah. Let me know in the comments, but are you making money or are you having to have 18 apps on your phone, juggling all these apps? Let me know how you are using the gig economy. And if you're using it and you're having uh, positivity, positive income, positive vibes, like you're feeling good about it. Let me know your secrets down below because we all can learn from each other and we all can utilize the gig economy to, you know, we can customize it to how we want to work it, whether you're part-time, full-time, whether you're urban, uh, maybe you're in a rural market, you have to know how you want to work it. But there isn't one cookie cutter way for everybody. So I know I like to ramble. It is what it is. That's I had an idea of what I wanted to do today and I just wasn't feeling it. So I said, this is the video we're going to make. But let me know in the comments. I asked you all some questions. Let me know down below what, how and what do you guys do? What's your minimum? And I want to hear some logic. I want to hear from somebody that doesn't take anything less than six or seven bucks. But if it's going a mile, like, wouldn't you take it? But you'll take something that's double the amount for more miles. Let me understand the logic behind that. I really want to know what, like, where's the logic there? And just remember, I was able to turn the apps off today because I have a cushion making money doing other things passively. And I wanna, I'm gonna keep harping on that because that is what we should all be aspiring to, okay? We should all be aspiring to. If you're in your car more than you'd like to be, if you find yourself getting more frustrated, you don't wanna be out there, but you're out there because you have to, you're gonna burn out at some point. It's not sustainable. Level up your options. A lot of us talk about, well, I'll just have all these apps and I'll just turn them on and turn them off. That's cool, but it's still the same kind of work. Level up in a different way by making money doing other things so that if the apps do go away, you still have something coming in this day, something coming in that day. Because I could sit out here and make 200 bucks on DoorDash and maybe it's gonna take me six hours, 10 hours, 11 hours, whatever. That's not a flex anymore, okay? I can't sit here and say, yeah, I made $200. No, 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 no. Anybody can do that, mostly on your market. But can you make that in DoorDash, or maybe 100 in DoorDash, but then have $1,000 coming from here, 500 coming from there, $1,000 coming from there? That is the flex, that's leveling up. That is a true multi-apper. So stop giving DoorDash and all these apps so much of your time. Start to balance it out a little bit more. In the long run, I believe it will benefit you way more. And if you disagree with what I'm saying, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. I love, love, love to hear 
the other side and we can talk about it in the comments down below. And I think because I want to ask y'all in closing, would you take this order? 425.2 miles. You're basically at the restaurant and you could walk it a block to drop it off. Would you take that? 425.2 miles. You could walk it after you pick it up. Would you take that order? You guys let me know in the comments down below. Go check out the website. I'm going to put a link to the description. I'll put a link to the gig 2023, GigCon 2023 in Denver. We have a lot of new information in there. Check it out. We have a hotel booked, an event booked. I'm going to be links coming very soon where you guys could book your hotel if you want to come to the conference at a cheap rate. Go check out the conference in the description box down below. I'll see you all tomorrow. Just remember, try to work a little less gig economy, a little more working on you. In the long run, you can look a year or two, maybe it's three years down from now, you will we'll probably be making more money if you decide to start betting on yourself right now on June 1st, 2023. Don't know what the video will be about tomorrow, but I hope to see you there. Have a great night. If you like this video or others, check out this one here. Consider hitting subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments.